Fezda continue their exciting late war German releases with this Jag Tiger heavy German tank destroyer. The Jag Tiger was based on a modified King Tiger chassis and armed with a 12.8cm Pack 44 gun. It had very heavy armour protection and the vehicle weighed in at over 70 tonnes. Although 150 of these monster vehicles were ordered, only about 80 or so were produced before the war's end. If we look at the back of the box we see a three view of the completed unpainted vehicle. Like the King Tiger, this kit has a higher parts count with 23 parts. This complex build means Fezda have included a separate instruction sheet, not just an exploded diagram on the back of the box as they do with some of their simpler kits. The parts come on two sprues of light grey plastic contained in a bag to keep the parts together. Let's get them out of the bag and look at the first sprue. The first sprue has the hull sides, hull bottom, tracks and the casemate parts. If we look close up we can see that the parts are well detailed and the moulding is crisp. There are spare track links moulded onto the hull sides. The second sprue has the hull top, suspension, gun and mantlet and rear hull as well as the internal bracing pieces. Again, detail is sharp. There's nice engine deck detail here. That's the parts, so time to start construction. The first step is the lower hull, suspension and internal bracing pieces. The lower hull pieces have some good details with a number of access panels moulded on. This is nice detailing and shows the evolution of the Zvezda 1100th range from their early sometimes featureless designs. Trim off any excess sprue material. Like the King Tiger and other newer Zvezda kits, the Jag Tiger uses the new harder plastic that cuts and sands better than the softer plastic of their earlier kits. Attach the bracing piece to the lower hull. You can refer to the instructions for correct alignment, but the posts will only let the part fit in the correct way. These kits are designed to snap together, which is why they're designed around this internal brace. Now we can add the suspension pieces to the brace. This is the standard 9 interleaved road wheel Henschel suspension. Only 11 Jag Tigers were completed with the 8 wheel Porsche suspension. Jag Tigers used a torsion bar suspension system like the King Tiger, but the greater weight of the vehicle put a lot of strain on the system. Malfunctions and breakdowns were common. There are a couple more support pieces for the upper hull that need to be fitted to the spine piece at this point. These will provide posts to hold the hull later on. I might suggest not gluing these. I had some issues with misaligned posts after the glue dried, which tried to pull the hull sides out of true, leaving gaps. Leaving these free gives you some wriggle room later. Rear mudguards are fitted next. Then the one-piece hull rear slots into place. This has guide pins to hold it securely. The jack is a separate piece. It has pins to hold it securely, but be careful cutting and fitting this part. It can be fragile. Next up are the tracks. Snip them off the sprue and clean them up. Note the road wheels have good detail, but the track detail itself is simplified. The same is for the Zvezda Ferdinand and King Tiger. The track pieces are engineered so they can only fit on one way, so you can't get this wrong. This is what we've got so far. Clip off the upper hull piece and make sure to sand down any remaining sprue material as these pieces have chamfered joints and need to be smoothed to avoid leaving gaps. Fit this to the lower hull. This can be a bit fiddly but hold it together while the glue dries to get a good no gaps fit at the front. Add the hull machine gun ball mount to the glasses plate. This makes a nice tight fit. The next assembly is the casemate for the main armament. Trim the front and top pieces off the sprue. They're mated to another internal brace to hold them together. Again, the edges here are all chamfered, so with care during assembly there shouldn't be too many gaps. When completed, add this to the upper hull. Again, it can take some effort to get all the edges to fit flush without gaps, but it can be done. The hull and casemate sides are single piece assemblies. Snip them from the sprue and clean them up. There are still more chamfered surfaces here, so take the time to trim and sand these for a good fit. Adding the sides to the hull is tricky as you need to line up three sets of pins and sockets. If they're out of position they can pull the hull sides out of alignment. I had to trim one of the internal hull pins off and use glue on the edges of the hull part to get a good fit on one side. Cut the mantlet and gun free from the sprue. The gun needs some mould line removal, but nothing too bad here. When they're ready, glue the gun to the mantlet. 
There's a groove on the mantlet to take the lifting point moulded onto the gun, so this will guide you to get it the right way up. The last piece is the ball mount for the gun. Glue this in, then snap the gun and mantlet assembly into place. The internal pieces on the hull and brace will hold it in place, or glue it for a more durable solution. Here's the final completed kit. The detail is crisp and the end result is worth the complex build. Most of the detail is good and crisp, very much what we've come to expect from latest Vista kits. The only issue of note is the simplified track detail, but I suspect that's a compromise to avoid expensive slide moulds. It's certainly not a deal breaker, and it won't detract markedly from the vehicle on the tabletop. Let's look at a bit of history. It was common German practice to field assault guns and tank destroyers based on their current battle tanks. Since they didn't need a turret, tank destroyers were cheaper and simpler to produce. They could also field a heavier gun. The most common tank destroyer for the Germans was the Stug III, initially an assault gun but over time this transitioned over to an anti-tank role. It was based on the proven chassis of the Panzer III tank. The Stug superstructure was also used on some Panzer IV chassis, but the Jag Panzer IV seen here was a specialised tank hunter variant developed from this tank. The Panther chassis was the basis for the fearsome Jag Panther tank destroyer. The Jag Panther had thick armour and mounted a deadly 8.8cm gun. The massive Jag Tiger is based on the King Tiger. It has a massive and devastating 12.8cm cannon and very thick armour. However, the weight of the King Tiger was already stressing the engine and drivetrain, and the extra weight of the Jag Tiger made this even worse. This heavy vehicle was slow and difficult to manoeuvre and breakdowns were frequent. Some estimates list breakdown as a larger cause of Jag Tiger losses than combat. So let's look at the Jag Tiger in Flames of War. These are the version 3 stats and rules. If we look at Forces of War we see Jag Tigers are only available in Late War and only in lists from Berlin, Ardennes Offensive, Bridget Remagen and Nuts. It really is a monster. The front armour is 16, something most Allied tanks would struggle to penetrate. Opponents should manoeuvre for a flank shot, but even the side armour of 8 is a challenge. Jag Tiger also has a mighty punch. The 12.8cm Pack 44 has an anti-tank of 17, and its massive 48-inch or 120cm range means it has a long reach. It can afford to stay out of range and pummel an opponent. Because it's a breakthrough gun, infantry teams, gun teams and unarmoured vehicles automatically fail their saves when hit by a Jag Tiger. German tank destroyers generally have hull-mounted guns, and this means the field of fire is a 180 degree arc in front of a line drawn across the hull. So opponents will try and flank Jag Tigers, so placement and movement of this vehicle is important. But it's not all good news. Jag Tiger is overloaded and unreliable. Overloaded means it bogs down on a 1 or a 2 when making a bogging check, so keep it away from difficult terrain. Unreliable means if the tank moves at the double it must roll a dice, and bogs down on a 1. So this vehicle needs to keep the speed down. So Jag Tigers are big heavy hitters that can do a lot of damage, but they're slow and can get mired down in terrain. They also have a limited field of fire, so maybe they need to be supported by other units for flank support. This kit is another great late war German heavy armoured vehicle in this Vesta range. It's the only Jag Tiger in plastic and I can see a lot of German players adding these to their forces in Flames of War. It builds into a great kit that will look fantastic on the table.